Welcome back to the Wrestling Roundtable. Joining the panel to my right, which is your left, is Lawrence Haber, music composer and fan of 23 years. And we were just talking about MMA and the biggest star in MMA pretty much right now is Brock Lesnar, who is a big man. And when you think about pro wrestling, you generally think about big men because historically, wrestling seems to, once it's gotten out of the carnivals and started becoming more of the worked sort of thing with Luthez and Buddy Rogers sort of through the 50s. From there on, it wasn't too much longer that wrestling started leaning more towards the freak show aspect. Now, what we mean about big men is pretty much the giant size. Because you could say Hulk Hogan, Scott Hall, Stan Hansen, those sort of guys, they are much bigger than the normal person. In fact, my favorite thing was when they would try and make Hogan look big by putting him against two of the smallest Puerto Rican jobbers they have. <laughs> but we are going to concentrate more on the giants, the vertical and horizontal, so tall and or fat. Now, of course, like I said through wrestling history, if you go through the different territories and different time frames, you're going to see these names become really famous that happen to be these sort of freak show guys. Like in New York, you had Haystacks Calhoun and Gorilla Monsoon. Canada had Don Leo Jonathan, of course, Giant Baba in Japan. But when you talk about big men in wrestling, I think the first name you're going to have to talk about is Andre the Giant. Now, a lot of the people in our generation caught the tail end of his career when he was getting really broken down. His disease was really starting to creep in on his physical ability and he was slow and in a lot of pain but when you watch a lot of young Andre stuff and he could really move you could see why he became a star all over the world it's such a unique character this gentle giant sort of thing he had a great charisma about him too but don't you think Andre deserves to be mentioned first Andre is the first legendary giant mm -hmm. he was the giant for Andre a long time he was the most famous wrestler in the world yeah before Hogan and that's mm -hmm. why that match was such a huge match at WrestleMania because mm -hmm. it was not just the giant versus the star of the era, but it was the biggest star from the previous era, maybe the biggest star up to that point mm -hmm. versus the future biggest star. It was the first passing of the torch. That, the that really solidified the christening of Hogan that happened a few years ago. This made right. him super legit, even if that whole undefeated streak and never been body slam thing was worked. But <laughs> well, the first thing we want to ask, of course, we're talking about best and worst. Who do you think are some of the best big men in wrestling? Vader. When I saw him in WCW, you saw this fat guy walk out with like a jock strap on his face. What is this? Then he gets in the ring. He's doing moonsaults. He's pounding. He's doing ground and pound before UFC existed. He was amazing. His punches were the scariest looking pro wrestling punches. He looked like he was battering yeah. people. And there's stories of him battering people. Undertaker. This guy has evolved with the change in times of pro wrestling and is still as over as he always was. I mean, this guy never had any dull moments when it came to crowd response, can move very well, very fast at his age, as a size, really agile, took heavyweight match to a whole new level, and he got stuck with a lot of crap. A lot yeah. of crap. <laughs> with Mark Henry and King Kong Bundy and all these other guys they put him with at WrestleMania. It's he's, like, like, he's like the litmus test for the rookies. Like, they throw him, like, Heidenreich. But then he can still has great matches with Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels and Triple H. That's like his reward for every other year. You have to face these slugs like Kamala. Yeah. And yeah. Go have fun with Bret Hart. <laughs> but I think that's a good measure of what a good worker is. And a lot of big men get shit, especially from the internet smart marks, for not being good workers and their bullshit work the leg definition of the term. Of course, we know being a good worker entails a lot more than that, but I think a lot of big men get a lot of shit for it, and then you look at someone like Undertaker, who's had such great matches with such a variety of opponents, and the person that also springs to mind is someone we were talking about before, Brock Lesnar. For a guy who was only there two years on TV, then an additional year of OVW, to be that good so quick, can you imagine how good he would be now if he had stuck with it? Who do you Absolutely. think are some of the best ones? Bam Bam Bigelow. He had a real unique look. And I like the big guys who can play the giant, but can also play the smaller guy who has to take down the bigger guy. I think they do that with Undertaker a lot, which is that Hulk Hogan paradigm, mm -hmm. which means that you're flexible. You can fight the tall guy, you can fight the small guy, you can also be either of those things. Now, a lot of old school fans would say more the guys like Bruiser Brody and Terry Gordy. But of all the years we've been watching wrestling, I can't remember someone, aside from maybe Andre, walking out and just getting a reaction based on what they look like. 
Now, for non-wrestling fans, I could see them doing that with Andre. But for our generation, I think the person who did that was Yokozuna. Nobody that I know of ever got a reaction without previous knowledge like Yokozuna did. Because when he's doing leg drops and bonsai drops, it's so visceral. You don't need this explained to you. It's a giant, fat sumo wrestler <laughs> killing this jobber or killing this guy. And I think he is another guy that doesn't get a lot of credit for being a good worker. They built him up in the way that you're supposed to build a big man up. He goes through everybody. Mm -hmm. He beats some of the top Duggins. The top and I Rumble that year, and he threw Savage out. Heel wins the Royal Rumble. And now he's going to go to WrestleMania fight Bret Hart, who's also a pretty small wrestler in comparison. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. He's probably going to win the title. The Giants. The Giant, the, not the big not show. Not the big show, <laughs> not the big show, but the Giant. The this son guy, of the Giant. <laughs> they destroyed Hulkamania. Yeah. When he came in to WCW, <laughs> had his first match against Hogan, but the athleticism this guy had, he could do drop kicks, he could hop over the ropes from the ring. Reportedly, he could do a moonsault at the time, but you know we never got to see it on TV. But man, was this guy an athlete. He was still young, too. What was he, like 25? Mm -hmm. Something when he debuted? Probably younger. Probably younger, right. He went up north. The Big Show came out. That's when you got to see, eh, he slowed down a little bit. Maybe the motivation factor wasn't there. But I'm just talking about the Giant when he first came in. Yes. What we remember, mm -hmm. great, great it, wrestler. His first finish was breaking Hogan's neck. Yeah. That's scary. And yeah. you really could believe that he could do that yes, in bare hands if you want Plus, to. Plus, we got oh. the classic uh, monster truck match with him and Hogan. Well, on we don't need to Joe talk Lewis about that. <laughs> but you've said on the show before, and I think it's absolutely true, that of all the Giant guys, he seemed like he was the real successor to Andre for a bit. I don't know, maybe time will tell. He's still got some time to do that. Maybe he didn't quite live up to that potential. But I do want to ask, what are some of the best big men matches? Now, we're not going to talk about big men versus little men this time. And what I mean about big men matches is giant versus giant. And what's funny is about something like Hogan Andre, they started off portraying Hogan as the big guy. Now, once you do that, the only next step to challenge this guy, like Undertaker's had to face many times, <laughs> is a bigger guy. So what are some of the best big men matches to you? Brock and Undertaker in a cell. Because Hell in I, a cell, it, yeah. it's hard with two big guys to have them go out there and work a great standard big man match. The Warrior Hogan match, even though it's not two big guys in this sense, that's the style people expect, just a powerhouse match. But that match, especially with the cage, that element of just the two huge monster guys beating the heck out of each other and having an awesome finish and then Brock going up all bloody. It was a near perfect match. It was near perfect. I love Brock versus Big Show from Survivor Series that year. Where even though Brock lost the belt, he still he F five'd him. He was throwing him around like yeah, a sack of like, potatoes. Uh -huh. Big Show. Big Show. This guy. Yeah. Taker Kane WrestleMania 14. 14. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. Where everyone just uh, popped for the entrance. But 14, I thought it was a really great back and forth match. I wanted Taker again, showed his athleticism, going over the top ropes. One of their probably better matches. There's a match that a lot of people haven't seen outside the UK that was on a UK only pay-per-view, Insurrection 99, that was Big Show when he was still thin, coming into WWF in 99 the first time, fighting Kane, who had also slimmed down himself. Now, for anybody who says that big men can't be good workers, watch this fucking match. This match had psychology, it had agility, it was a great demonstration of what big men can do. Also, their match from Raw in 2006, remember when they were doing like <laughs> chain wrestling moves? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, these two, you know, when they work, they, if they want to. Sometimes they're just told not to do that because they need to be the freak show. Mm. But when that they can great. do it, why not? Why not? It's something different. It yeah. did look silly, but that <laughs> may qualify as something different, and, though. And the it, fans were stunned by it because yeah. they're like, wait a minute, what's this chain wrestling crap? Speaking of crap, we're going to move on to some of the worst big men when we come back. How did this Diesel not get mentioned out of you, Larry? Yeah. Taker Diesel from WrestleMania 12 was awesome. Yeah, yeah. 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 the next one. Yeah. His last year was when he had his best matches. Yeah. And Brett. As best. Okay, here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, his last six months, basically. Yeah. From when he yeah, so bro. Left. Yeah, Eric, yeah. you said brought up your favorite match, the Undertaker, the WrestleMania. WrestleMania 19. 19. Your favorite match that everyone else hates. The match that only you like. It's not bad. I know. You're the only person I know who likes it. That would be the best match You hated Shawn Michaels and Jericho, but you liked that. I know. Yeah. I don't get it. Michaels and Jericho. The wrong person won. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, like that shit doesn't matter. <laughs> Sid's awesome. I didn't miss anybody, right? Sid's the man. Sid! Sid had good matches. Huh? What the hell is this camera doing here, huh? 
Huh? They want us to talk about the wrestling round table. Huh? There's no such thing as a round table in wrestling. Huh? They're crazy. This Eric, uh, who was that? The Eric, he keeps emailing me and sending me texts back and forth. Huh? I don't want to talk to you. Huh? Lawrence, huh? and then the, the other one, Rodney. Huh? What the hell is the problem emailing me and calling me every day? Huh? <laughs> Not to mention that little brick, it sucks. Do us a favor and get that stinking wrestling round table camera out the hell out, out of our faces. Now, now, my yeah. love. Welcome back to the Wrestling Roundtable. Joining the panel once again is Brett Simonello. He's been a fan of over 20 years. And before we move on to who we think are some of the worst giants in wrestling, the worst big men, I did want to ask, because there are going to be a lot of names brought up. Why didn't you say blah, blah, blah? There are a lot of guys who kind of suck a lot of the times. But if they're motivated, they could have some good matches. People give Kevin Nash shit all the time. But when he's working against a guy like Shawn Michaels or Bret Hart, it doesn't get five stars from one person. There are people who, like Matt Morgan, who isn't that bad, but oftentimes doesn't put in a, a great performance. But there are a lot of people, however, like Giant Gonzalez or <laughs> Great Kali, who obviously get their spot just because of their size. Do wrestling fans care about that as much as promoters, I guess, seemingly would think? When you have someone who's like eight feet tall, it is impressive to see that, but then you can also go to a basketball game and you can see athletes who are pretty big and, mm -hmm. and good, like Manute Bowl. It's Wonderful. impressive for the first five minutes. After you get over how big he is and then you find out how bad he is, you're like, all right, next big guy. It's, it's all for the promotional fashion. Yeah. People, wrestling was built on big man, the McMahon Jr. era at least, as the big man. They want to see the hero beat the bigger evil guy. Right. And that's the only reason why Big I think evil. some of these guys are there. But on one hand, wrestling, when it started becoming a work, was built on the smaller guys before it quickly became the freak show thing. But even now with UFC, they have lighter heavyweight guys, welterweights, main eventing shows, and they're a huge draw. They have a whole promotion, WC, based on smaller guys. Right. I don't think it's a secret, though, that one of the reasons they're getting a lot more press now is because they have heavyweight stars. Well, right, stars. because on the other like hand, boxing. the heavyweights tend to be the biggest yeah, stars, literally, the and guys fight. But as we've seen, WWE can't learn anything from UFC, mm -hmm. so why would they start now? But I'm just saying that <laughs> in, in boxing, MMA with Lesnar, in the headline of 100. It seems like the heavyweights are always the biggest stars. Is that the way it's going to be forever? Probably. That's the McMahon paradigm, and he, he creates it. And even in other promotions, they tend to, when they get a guy who's between six, seven, and seven feet tall, he's going to get a push. Morgan! <coughs> <laughs> All right. I thought you had something <laughs> to say. No, 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 no. <laughs> Let's move on and talk about some of the worst big men in wrestling. Who do you think those are, Lawrence? Besides the usual suspects of the Giant Gonzalez and Great Kali, a guy like Mr. Hughes just bothers me. He gets a push, they, they keep changing his gimmick, and he's just not good, and he's not that impressive. But because he's over, I don't know, 6'5", 6'6", he gets a push. Kurgan. Pre-oddities with the whole... The claw. The, I, mean, I, I hated everything yeah, about that yeah. guy. I liked it. I couldn't stand him. Vladimir Kozlov, WWE's Ooh. Fedor. I don't even <laughs> think he's really that bad. I can't. Actually. He's one of those guys where he makes me want to change. He's the very channel. average. I See, he he was really shoved down our throats with the whole Triple H, Jeff Hardy, Edge title situation. I didn't think he was talented. Obviously, they found that out the hard way. Now he's on ECW. And nobody knows what he's doing. Denying oh, he that. had his chance. <laughs> There's no denying that. It seems like he needs some time to cook. But I don't think he was as bad as, let's say, when they threw Kali in there. I mean, let's be realistic, people. At least he could move a little Probably bit. Probably won the world title. The belt flare hat. <laughs> a lot of people will jump to the giant Gonzalez's and those sort of guys, Heidenreich or whatnot. But the equivalent of that in the 80s were two names that sprung to mind. Uncle Elmer and Jerry Blackwell in AWA. Oh my God! Jerry if Blackwell. these fans today think Kali's terrible, they should watch <laughs> Uncle Elmer from 1986. But we also want to cover what were some of the worst big men matches. Again, giant versus giant. When Diesel was champion and they threw him against Mabel to try and make a Hogan Bundy Hogan Andre <laughs> match at SummerSlam, that was just atrocious in every way. Well, trying to make Diesel a seven foot <laughs> Hogan wearing black didn't quite work at all. Anyway, did it? Every time 911 came out in ECW, and then you had Big Dick Dudley, who frankly wasn't that big, but he was their big man. Every time they went toe-to-toe, -to -toe, nothing happened. It was just awful. I just couldn't stand it. Two big men. Bam Bam vs. Vader vs. Japan. This is 
a match. Before I saw it, I was like, man, I wish these guys would fight in America. Well, on paper, it sounds it, awesome. Exactly. And I found it on YouTube, and it was a fucking stinker. It was horrible. Both of them just seemed really off their game. Wasn't entertaining at all, not in the least bit. Was it as bad as Kane versus Big Show from King of the Ring 99? Oh. Was it as bad as Kane versus Kali from WrestleMania? Seemed to be mentioning Kane a lot. Giant Singh, which was Great Kali. Kali's name in Japan, against Giant Silver. Oh, Giant Silver. Oh Silva. my god. Yeah, it just sounds guy. like a mess. <laughs> yeah. It's one of those matches where it's that curiosity factor for the car crash. But then you watch it and you can't finish it. It's so bad. But what about those guys that people are going to be like, first of all, don't say, why didn't you mention or what about? That's your job. You mention them. You're part of the show. You're part of the conversation. You fill in the gaps that we miss. So don't say, what about Sid? What about Kevin Nash? Although we may mention some of those names, anything we miss, you cover. But what about those sort of guys? Guys <laughs> that have this reputation of being terrible, I'm a, but once in a while. Sid is very unique. Yeah. He is over always, no matter what. And people just like his look. They like his charisma. Nash and he too. didn't have yeah. to yeah. be a great... But even Sid a little more. I mean, people are always clamoring for Sid to return, even now. So I always like Sid. But... <laughs> when he fought The Undertaker at a WrestleMania main event, mm -hmm. it was a disaster. It also couldn't follow Bret and Austin. Right. Yeah, yeah but this is what, event that was match. a typical Vince McMahon thing. This is what people really want to see. Right. And it was terrible. Like a couple years ago when they had to vacate the big right. gold belt, the WCW belt, <laughs> a billion <laughs> times in a row for injuries. For they put weeks. it on Kali for, like, why? Just because he's seven oh, I was thinking you were talking about when Sid and Nash fought after he who we do not oh, speak no. of. But the same thing. Oh. They immediately put them in a hell in a cell on thunder. Mm -hmm. So what do you think is going to happen? Mm -hmm. They're going to go out there and have a Brock taker? No. I may be a Sid apologist, but when you watch <laughs> old Sid stuff when he was first starting in the NWA, these crowds are rapid oh, for this guy. No, and has there ever been anybody who's had a better look than Sid? Absolutely. He looks like a Greek god. He was so <laughs> intense. He just got that look in his eye like he could snap at any man. You believed him. When he would squash these guys with this impressive choke slam and power bomb, that's part of the reason probably people were getting so into him so early and he's on. He's a great promo too. He, I yeah. mean, even when he was Good completely out of the best power bomb. Mm -hmm. he did. Can you imagine if a guy came in two years after Hogan was a top star, like Sting was, and they wanted to see that guy beat Hogan? Well, they were cheering Sid they, over Hogan in 92 anyway. No. Now, of course, they were getting sick of Hogan by 92 anyway. Not according anyway, to the tape. But <laughs> that they overdubbed. But Sid was also this new up-and-comer. But we're going to have a new up-and-coming talk next time because it is all over! Join us next time. We're going to be talking about Puro Resu, Japanese pro wrestling, and the best and worst hardcore matches and wrestlers. So for the panel, Tim Conley, Martin LeConte, Chris Harris, Brett Simonello, Lawrence Haber, Rodney LeConte, I'm your host, Eric Santamaria. Thank you and join us next week. <laughs>